so much easier now because I wrote my writ, I wrote my predictions down. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that format from here on out. Um, now I wanna start by talking about um, the game that I watched today just because it's fresh in my mind. And that is this Buffalo Bills versus New York Jets game. I did predict the Bills here, so I got that one correct. But boy, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> that might have legitimately been one of the worst football games I've ever watched in my life. Not because of the on-field play. The on-field play was actually decently exciting. But just the penalties. Excuse me, I didn't have my sheet up. I apologize, very unprofessional of me. So many penalties in this game. It's unreal. Um, it was... It felt like every single play, there was a flag being thrown. Like, I, it legitimately felt like they had the replacement refs out there or something like that. Like, it was just, it wasn't even fun to watch this game. Because any time there was a big play or anything, you were just waiting for the referees to take it off the board. And that did happen a couple times. Um the play of the game for me, there was that big Hail Mary that Rodgers threw going into halftime, 52 yarder dying moments, I thought that that Knox touchdown that Allen threw was going to be the final score heading into half, but the Jets, they brought some life back into it there and then this game was just just, just a complete dumpster fire in the second half, you only had one field goal apiece and um just, uh, I, I feel bad for the people who paid to go see this game legitimately, legitimately one of the worst NFL games I've ever watched, uh, just because the referees, so, so annoying, uh, Breeze Hall had an amazing game, he had some big runs, I think he had one really big run, or really big reception, one of the two, taken off the board because of a flag, but he absolutely balled out, um, yeah, this, this was just <laughs> such an unfortunate game, 23 to 20 is your final score, in favor of the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen has 19 completions on 25 attempts, 215 yards, 2 touchdowns, 0 interceptions, Aaron Rodgers, 23 completions on 35 attempts, 294 yards, 2 touchdowns, 1 interception. I will say the play calling did look a bit better uh, this week for, sorry I was suggesting that there, for the Jets. So, getting rid of Salah, even though I thought really it wasn't necessary, I know he's a very defensive minded coach. So, maybe the offense will be better from here on out. It looked better this game than it had in the prior weeks. But, um, I mean, it was just so hard to tell because this game was such a cluster of calls and no calls. and Or not no calls, just calls all the time, pretty much. Um, I did watch this Bengals versus Giants game. I predict Bengals to get the win, and they did, but I don't remember much of this game, I didn't watch it, I watched it yesterday, but I just think overall it wasn't a very memorable game, 17-7 in favor of the Bengals, that, that Joe Burrow rush, uh, almost a 50-yard rush, that, that was memorable, that was a very good run from him, sticking the ball out as he crosses the plane, um, he did very good there, uh, but overall this was, like I said, I watched this game and I can barely remember what happened. Um, the 
Giants, though, they did get four sacks. I, I do remember that defense putting a decent amount of pressure on Joe Burrow throughout the game overall. Joe Burrow, 19 completions on 28 attempts, 208 yards, zero touchdowns, passing, but one rushing touchdown, zero interceptions. Daniel Jones, 22 completions on 41 attempts, 205 yards, zero touchdowns, and one interception, but the Bengals are now 2-4. and four. The Giants are also 2-4. and four. Um, I'm kind of all over the place right now, but uh, I'm just going by the games that I watched first. Um, so now we're going to talk Lions-Cowboys. I predicted the Lions here. I had forgotten about their pretty heated game last season, the Cowboys beating the Lions last season. I had forgotten about that, but it was very evident that the Lions had not forgotten about that. The Lions and Cowboys, I guess they sort of have this little mini rivalry thing going at the moment, I'm not sure. But then again, apparently Lions fans really dislike the Seahawks as well, I learned that. Uh, when we played them uh, like, like two weeks back, a lot of their fans were like talking mad trash about the Seahawks. I was kind of like, why do you guys dislike us? Because I mean, personally, I, I, I quite like the Detroit Lions, you know. Um, any Detroit sports team they've suffered for so long, like I like to see them do well. And I was like, why are you, like we've never really had run, run-ins with Detroit. I can't think of why so many Detroit fans have issues with Seattle, so I don't know if it's just, like, Detroit fans in general being, like, prickly towards other fan bases or what, but, um, they definitely have issues with this Cowboys team, and you could tell the players did as well. Um, and they, this, this seemed personal at times, 47 to 9, in favor of the Detroit Lions, an absolute blowout. They were only a three and a half point favorite and they won this thing by 38. But this is also the game I saw a lot of Cowboys fans saying like, get rid of Dak, trade Dak, trade Micah Parsons. This feels like this might be a catalyst point for Dallas. Um, you know, Dallas, after this game, they're three and three, they're 500, they're third in their division, but this was legitimately a, a, one of the worst games I've seen from Dak Prescott in a while. He has some rough games sometimes, but this was, I don't know, this was on a completely different level of, of bad in many ways. And um, just in, it, it, all over the field, the Cowboys looked outclassed. I, I don't think there was a single like 50-50 battle that went their way. I don't think there was a single like, like, oh, our special teams was better, our edge rush was better. Like, they didn't win anything there. Detroit had more first downs. They converted more third downs. They were more efficient on fourth downs. They had more rushing yards. They had more passing yards. They had more sacks. They threw fewer interceptions. They punted the ball. They didn't punt the ball at all. Like, it's just, yeah, <laughs> just a bad game overall for Dallas. Now, unfortunately, for Detroit, this win comes at the heavy cost. Aiden Hutchinson snapping his leg. It was really, really bad. I was watching this game live, and uh, I had to kind of, you know, uh, jerk away from my phone because it was grisly. kind of reminded me, um... As a Portland Trail Blazers fan, remind me of the Yusuf Nurkic injury from a couple of years ago. Um, just really not good, and you know he's, he's probably he's not not probably he's definitely not seeing the field again this season. I think even if they make the postseason, I don't think there'll be a, a time where he's ready to go. And you know he's an elite edge rusher, so that definitely is going to impact the Lions defense. I think that. They should still be a good team. They should, they'll still be a contender, but um, that might be a uh, you know as they get deeper into the playoffs, having Hutchinson out might be something that ends up staying them. So um, they do get the win, but in, in many ways they also take a loss.
loss here. Jared Goff, 18 completions on 25 attempts, 315 yards, 3 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. Dak Prescott, 17 completions on 33 attempts, 178 yards, 0 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. Uh, the lone bright spot for me, for the Dallas Cowboys, is C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is a guy that I'm, I'm starting to like more and more. Uh, the more I see him play, in my opinion, he was one of the lone bright spots here for Dallas. Uh, average, got 89 yards, averaging 12.7, so basically averaging a, um, a first down and then some every time he got the ball. Falcons versus Panthers. I did not watch the entirety of this game. I watched a little bit of it. Uh, I did predict the Falcons here. And they do get the W. So we're off to a very strong start. But this was the last game that I watched uh, this week. Watched four games. Really, it was three and a half games. Um, but yeah, this Falcons team, they're finally, you know, they had a bit of a slow start. I, I said going into this season, they're one of my dark horse candidates. Uh, dark horse Super Bowl contenders. I thought that they would be a really good team this year. And coming out of the gate they didn't really look it but recently they have been on a roll um, they're looking more comfortable this is now their third win in a row they're coming into Seattle next week and I have absolutely no illusions of us winning that game after how this week went um, so I think they're going to easily get their fourth win in a row coming up here soon but um, yeah, the Falcons, they're 4 and 2. They beat the Panthers here 38 to 20. And Kirk Cousins actually had somewhat of a quiet game. He didn't have to do too much. He you know, wasn't making any huge plays, really. That, nothing that I saw, at least. Um, he only had the one passing touchdown in the game, and that was the one that I saw just before halftime. Kirk goes 19 completions on 30 attempts. Uh, 225 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Andy Dalton, 26 completions on 38 attempts, 221 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Bijan Robinson has a monster game with two rushing touchdowns. And Drake London is really impressing me. I don't really, I've never heard too much about this guy coming into this season. Uh, but I've been paying a little bit of attention to the Falcons because I quite like Kirk Cousins. And he, I feel like Cousins in London have a really good connection. He gets the touchdown. I just, it feels like they they kind of work well with each other. And I really, am, I like Drake London quite a bit, actually. 74 yards off of six receptions in this game. Uh, and the touchdown. Bichon, though, is obviously the, yeah, the two touchdowns for him. 95 yards on 15 carries. He had a monster, monster game. Steelers versus Raiders. Breathe easy, Steelers fans. I picked you guys to win, and you still managed to get the win. I did not jinx you this week. Um, and this was just a, a ground and bound game here for the Steelers. Um, just yeah, 32 to 13 against the Raiders, but not a single passing touchdown. The Steelers get the win there. They're four and two. Um, they were a three and a half point favorite. They win by 19. Justin Fields retaining that starting position even after the, the loss and then even after Russell Wilson. I'm pretty sure Russell Wilson's healthy now, so it seems like Fields might be the guy all the way through this season. You know, God forbid there's an injury or something. And if, the, if Russell Wilson doesn't see the field this season, you have to wonder. Does he go to another team? Does he just maybe call it a career? I don't know. Um, but Justin Fields, he gets the job done here. And a rushing touchdown as well. I think like a 10-yarder. Fields has 14 completions on 24 attempts. 145 yards. Zero touchdowns. Zero interceptions. Aiden O'Connell, 27 completions on 40 attempts. 227 yards. One touchdown. One interception. Now 
I come to my first L for the video. Chargers versus Broncos. I thought the Broncos would ride their momentum uh, against a fairly banged up Chargers team, but uh, Chargers credit. Um, they get the win here, and you know, the, the Broncos, it looked like pretty much all the way through this, the Chargers are going to win. They hold the Broncos off the board for the first three quarters. Broncos start to mount a little bit of a comeback there at the end of the game with a back-to-back touchdown within five minutes by Bo Nix, one to Sutton, who I was hyping up in the predictions. Uh, only had 53 yards in this game and one to Franklin. But they fall just short, 23-16 to 16 in favor of the Chargers. So the, the Broncos' momentum comes to a little bit of a screeching halt there, but who do they have next week? They've got the Saints. I could go either way, I think. Herbert has 21 completions on 34 attempts, 237 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Bo Nix, 19 completions on 33 attempts, 216 yards, two touchdowns. One interception, but on the comeback that almost was there. Now it's time for another L for me. Um, this was my upset prediction, though, and I, I figured I was probably going to get this wrong. I predicted the Commanders to upset the Ravens. They came close. This was actually a very good, very close game, which I think if... You're the Commanders. If you're a Commanders fan, I think this is a very promising game for you, even though it is a loss. Because this is a seven-point game against one of the best teams in the NFL. You're still 4-2. and two. You're still the top of the NFC East. But the Ravens win this one 23-30. Lamar Jackson had an MVP-esque performance. Derrick Henry, him and Derrick Henry combined for almost 500 yards, which is exactly the reason the Ravens put these two dudes together, this offense. I really cannot, I really, really hope this offense can stay healthy going into the postseason because seeing Lamar and Derrick Henry in the playoffs, like seeing what they could do in the playoffs is going to be nuts. Like this this is a really exciting Ravens team. Um, but seven point win, thirty to twenty three in favor of the Baltimore Ravens. Jaden Daniels for the Commanders has twenty four completions on thirty five attempts. Again, though, him find that chemistry with Terry McLaurin, two touchdowns to Terry McLaurin, so um, he definitely has his preferred target there. 269 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Lamar Jackson, 20 completions on 26 attempts, 323 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And I mentioned him before, but Derrick Henry had 132 yards in 24 carries. He had two rushing touchdowns, just an absolute workhorse, though. 24 carries. I don't think any other running back that I have looked at thus far in the video had more than 10 carries and Derrick Henry had 24 crazy work they're, they're, they're making him earn that paycheck that's for sure Texans Patriots I predicted the Texans here they do get the win but let me tell you something there was all these reports about like uh, mutinies going on in the Patriots locker room and you know, guys wanting Drake May to play, they finally let Drake May play, and I don't think you can sit him back down. I, I just don't, I don't think you can do it. Um, he definitely, you know, he took some sacks, he took four sacks in this game, which was the concern that that offensive line would be Swiss cheese and he could get hurt. But he looked so much better than what the Patriots have been dealing with all season. And I, I just don't think you can sit him back down. Um, because if you have a bad, mediocre QB, you can't evaluate the rest of your offense.
offense, and that's not fair to the rest of that offense. Because, you know, you have guys trying to get their next contract, trying to, you know, do whatever, develop. And you just can't do it to them. And May looked so much better. Um, 41 to 21 in favor of Houston. It's a 20 point victory. CJ Stroud, 20 completions on 31 attempts. 192 yards, 3 touchdowns, 1 interception. Drake May, 20 completions on 33 attempts. 243 yards, 3 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. So, you know, 2 interceptions is not great, but I mean, this is a really good Texans team on both sides of the ball. So it's just, it's a tough defense, but he still threw 3 touchdowns, and one of them was a 40-yarder, and one of them was a 35-yarder. So that's one thing Drake May, we knew he had a big arm coming into this draft, but he showed that he can use that big arm even at the NFL level. It's a very exciting uh, spot for Patriots fans, and I, like I said, I don't think you can sit him back down. I think I saw a stat that said the Patriots, or Drake May, had more passing yards in one quarter than Jacoby Brissett did through the rest of this season, or might have been passing touchdowns, I'm not sure, one of those do, but a night and day difference. Browns versus the Eagles, I predicted the Eagles here coming off the bye, this game was pretty close, closer than I thought it should have been, but the Eagles do get the victory here, and this might be my best week. I've had thus far, knock on wood, uh, I think I had a pretty good week overall here. Um, 20 to 16 in favor of the Browns, or excuse me, in favor of the Eagles. Deshaun Watson, 16 completions on 23 attempts, 168 yards, 0 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. Jalen Hurts, 16 completions on 25 attempts, 264 yards. Two touchdowns, zero interceptions. And I'm not sure if this is true. I just saw this now, but this game had a blocked field goal returned for the touchdown. And there was a game last week that had a blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown. And I'm wondering if that has ever happened back-to-back -back weeks in NFL history. Or if this is the first time. I don't know the answer to that question. But it feels so exceedingly rare. I've only seen it personally like a decade plus as a football fan. I've only seen it a handful of times. Back to back weeks it happening. That'd be like back to back weeks of the kickoff return happening. Like I feel like it's pretty rare. So I don't know. Colts and Titans. I got the Titans to win here, uh, but the Colts do get the win. I did say this felt pretty 50 50. Uh, these teams are both kind of on a similar tier in my mind. Uh, 20 to 17 in favor of the Colts. Joe Flacco, 22 completions on 38 attempts, 189 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Will Levis, 16 completions on 27 attempts, 95 yards, one touchdown, one pick. It is actually crazy, <laughs> like, looking at Will Levis last season compared to Will Levis this season. It feels like I'm watching a completely different quarterback. I don't, I don't know what happened with him, but, yeah, something's going on. Cardinals Packers, I took the Packers there being in Lambeau, and this was a complete blowout, 34-13, 21 point win in favor of Green Bay, and this game was all Green Bay early, it was 24-10 uh, going into halftime, and then, you know, they, they had three more, the, the Cardinals in the second half, but then Green Bay gets 10 more, they were just completely in control of this game beginning to end. Kyler Murray has 22 completions on 32 attempts, 214 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Jordan Love, 22 completions on 32 attempts, 258 yards, four touchdowns, one interception.
deception. Bucks, Saints. I went in favor of the Buccaneers here. I was not expecting this level of a beatdown. Spencer Rattler got absolutely mollywopped. No, I didn't realize that Derek Carr was out uh, when I made this prediction. But, I mean, Spencer Rattler, he gets a defensive fumble returned against him. Uh, throws two interceptions. Just not a good game from him. I didn't realize. Now that maybe that injury happened during the game. Let me quickly, um... What happened with Derek Carr? <clears throat> Out three to four weeks with injury. Suffered the injury late in the fourth quarter. Oh, that's the Chiefs game. Okay, I just didn't even realize that. Okay. Well, it wouldn't have changed my prediction either way, but 51 to 27 is your score in favor of the Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield, 24 completions on 36 attempts, 325 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. That's a lot of interceptions there from Baker. I don't like that he threw three interceptions here. I also don't like that my light just died. Thankfully, the video is almost over. Spencer Rattler, 22 for 40, 243 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Sean Tucker had a monster game, 136 yards on 14 carries and a touchdown. And Godwin, of course, had a really good game as well. Jags, Bears. I got that one wrong. No, I think my logic on this game was still good. I, you know, I wouldn't, you know, Jaguars, having been to London 11 times with Caleb Williams in a monster game. Can I just, I have to say something. I don't know why this seems to be an issue primarily with Bears fans. Just because I'm picking a team to beat your team doesn't mean I dislike your team and I don't know why so many people in the comment sections of my videos don't understand that somebody has to win the game and there's not going to be any team at the end of this season that finishes without a loss so many I don't know why and this is honestly this is why I was hesitant at first to talk about sports on my channel because sports fans I feel like take things way too personally I have never taken sports personally it's I don't like doing I don't like trash talk either like I've never trash talked anyone or any team I just don't see the point in it I like taking taking any of this seriously is just ridiculous first of all so any of those sorts of comments just know I automatically just delete them most of the time they get dealt to review anyway because I have certain words that are automatically filtered and held to review but just and I've seen it so much with Bears fans so much this season they're not the only ones last year it was there's one fan base last year that was giving me so much crap I can't remember who it was I want to say Buccaneers, but it, it, none of this is personal. If you think I hate your team, go watch the video I did where I said which teams I like and which teams I hate, because I was telling the truth on that list. But anyways, I picked the Jaguars here um, because of the London thing, underestimating just how bad Doug Peterson is, and it boggles my mind that he still has his job. If I was if I was the Jaguars, I would have fired him as soon as this game was over. Because, I, like I said, coming into the preseason, I thought the Jaguars were going to have a decent season this year. Because I saw that they, they brought in talent, especially offensive talent. But it feels like that, that talent is being completely mismanaged and wasted and it's 
you know, Peterson is a big part of that. And I, I feel like there's no excuse for keeping him on this, in charge of this team any longer. Um, you know, but credit to the Bears, especially Caleb Williams, I really thought that, you know, intercontinental travel, jet lag, being in a new country for the first time, would be too much, especially on the younger players. Um, whereas a lot for these Jaguars, it's kind of been there, done that. I thought it was going to have a lot of a bigger impact than it did. Caleb Williams at a monster game. 35-16 in favor of the Bears' Trevor Lawrence. 23 completions on 35 attempts, 234 yards, 2 touchdowns, 1 pick. Caleb Williams, 23 for 29, 226 yards, 4 touchdowns, 1 pick. Okay, and finally, Niners versus Seahawks. I picked the Niners here as much as it, it pained me to do so, but it was clearly the right call. Um, we're cooked. As a Seahawks fan, we're cooked. That start of the season that we had has been completely undone. Over the last three weeks, we're on a three-game losing streak. We have the Falcons next week. There's no way that we win that game. And, and the thing is, you can't even pin it on Geno Smith. Like, there's no easy answer for how you fix this team at this point. Like, the team is just cooked. I think, I don't even know what you do at this point. Like, we're going to a full-on teardown and rebuild, I suppose. Um, 24 to 36 in favor of the San Francisco 49ers. Brock Purdy, 18 completions on 28 attempts, 255 yards, 3 touchdowns, 0 picks. Geno Smith, 30 completions on 52 attempts, 312 yards, 1 touchdown, 2 interceptions. So, pretty good overall this week. I went 10 for 14. Four, that gives me, let's check the math, 10 divided by 14, 71% this week, so for this season we are 52, 4, 80, 8, 92, 52 for 92. is 57% so this week gave me a pretty considerable bounce in my overall grade so that's very good anyway guys thank you so so much for watching I do hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day till next time guys bye bye